I definitely have some things to share about what the rest of the year kind of looks like on an astrological level, but, but really taking it much more into like the multidimensional uh, because we are multidimensional beings. And we just finished a, a major cycle with the squares between the planet Uranus and Pluto. And that ended in about, you know, 2020. And back in the 30s, uh, this particular time actually coincided with widespread social and political turmoil, catalyzing of mass movements, the rise of radical political philosophies and parties. And uh, yeah, so, so somebody named uh, Richard Tarnas speaks of this as far as this cycle, you know, kind of repeating itself. But here we are in 2020 where we're going to the next level of all of it. And has taken us right into the conjunctions of Pluto, Saturn, and Jupiter. And December 21st of this year is going to be the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction in the sign of Aquarius. And so what does all this mean? Well, these outer planets are initi initiatory planets. When we're dealing with initiatory planets, it's not just something that we experience personally. It's something that we're dealing with on a much more massive scale. But if we have personal planets that are very involved with these outer planets, we tend to feel it maybe a lot more than others. And it's like the downloads or the life events that are going to pull a person into a certain level of awareness that's necessary for not just leadership, but just maybe leading by example or being able to expose things that others might um, resist, tend to have strong connections with these initiatory planets already in their natal chart. So what's really great about the tool of astrology is it kind of cuts to the truth, helps us to see also where we've been dealing with a certain level of mind control. When we look at the Saturn part of it and the Saturn moon matrix and how that's impacted us for the last 26,000 years, especially, um, it's really helpful to be able to see, you know, if a person is still kind of underneath that spell or, or that level of, you know, artificial uh, intrusion because it does impact our DNA. Our junk DNA actually picks up on these artificial signals and, and we actually are, are a part of that simulation of this false reality. If we can't you know, dig deeper, if we can't begin to move past these seals and these fences. So a lot of this unrest has a lot to do with the inner work that we need to do, but we tend to externalize it because we experience it through the news, through the media, through the outward display of you know, things like riots and looting and um, the movements that we're seeing. And, and this year is especially really strong because there's a strong Mars square Pluto throughout the year. This month is taking us into a Venus square Pluto. And so that intensity you know, begins to really grow because anytime there's a squared aspect, we feel a certain level of friction. So if we're feeling friction with the outer planets, which are the planets Pluto, Uranus, and Neptune, especially on a mass scale like we're seeing, there's a lot of resistance to what this growth period really represents for humanity. We hear about ascension and all the prophecies connected to ascension, but then we see it like from the lens of the matrix sort of experience, um, what we get through the news, what we experience on social media, the targeting that we see, uh, you know, that, that goes along with it. And what these times really represent when we work with these initiatory planets and how it can affect us personally and how we can contribute a better energetic sort of response in order to, you know, bring something important into the collective consciousness is where we you know, can best spend our energy. And here we are, there's a full moon in Aries, happens to make a squared aspect with Saturn. So that's a lot of like feelings of restriction and constriction in our solar plexus. You know, that warrior energy or the desire to put things in a certain position is, is, is somewhat interrupted by the Saturn square. So the growth period right now is getting out of that Saturn moon matrix, the, the, the false king of tyranny, the lower level, you know, Saturn energy, which has a lot to do with control and enslavement and new world order agendas. So in this time that we're able to make these huge leaps, as we're experiencing these outer planets and these initiations, this attempted hijacking, you know, is the name of the game when it comes to the dark cabal. You know, false news, false media, we see that I mean, that's been an issue for so long, Project Mockingbird, and the slow indoctrination process to prepare people for these times to really uh, turn away from what's you know, available. And a lot of people really mistake those that are supporting Trump with being locked in the political. They don't understand that a lot of people that do actually understand a much larger picture. They've done uh, a lot of research about New World Order, about secret space programs, about dark technologies, and the things that have been held in secrecy. And, and I'm not gonna get into the Trump thing, but so back to these initiatory planets. How we experience them in our own lives is gonna differ. It's not gonna be the same, obviously. 
When we experience these initiatory planets in our own lives, we have to understand that Pluto's the planet of death, rebirth, alchemy, and transformation. The fact that it's been so close to Saturn throughout the year means this is our opportunity to actually separate ourselves or, or, or let go of our relationship with the cabal. Um, the traumas from thousands of years of dark history, uh, where we are still somewhat feeding into it or finding ourselves overly dependent on it. And of course, we all are to a certain degree because that's what we are born into. But it's a huge opportunity to take this huge leap. And we've got Jupiter that expands everything it touches. We have had the nodal axis go from the Cancer Capricorn polarity, which means that if it's on the nodes, we need to integrate that polarity, which uh, in the beginning of the year was giving us an opportunity to work out some of the Saturn moon matrix stuff, which is presented to us in the world as the facade of patriarchy. And you know the, the feminine energy being you know, exiled or suppressed or somewhat controlled by this patriarchal force. And then also this uh, Saturn energy, which represents authority and outer conditioning, how that has literally primed us to not recognize how powerful these times are, because we're not seeing that larger reality because of these dark technologies. And the fact that the earth grids have been manipulated, dark technologies were impacting the earth grids thousands of years ago, and all the grid workers that have come, the, uh, the fact that uh, the indigo and crystal kids are really lighting up their starseed missions and uh, higher groups like the Aquafarians have been able to incarnate. The fact that the sun started to move through the 12th, or excuse me, the 13th sign of Phaeacus in 2010, which really represented this timeline shift. The 13th sign of Phaeacus is connected to the mother arc and also the element ether. So with that all in the mix, these conjunctions are extra powerful because there's a quality of energy that's available that hasn't been available in a super duper long time. Um, if the sun just started to move through a fiacus as of 2010, it offers us the capacity to upgrade our DNA in ways that we haven't been able to. And this is why this is such a prophesized time and why the Mayans have, you know, put so much attention on the Venus transits, which is a part of the repair work because the orbit of Venus draws a perfect pentagram and the sacred geometry of a rose, and it's helped the mother energy really drop back into the planetary core and begin to create these activations. So as we have entered this new cycle with these conjunctions, the Pluto part of it, which is actually connected to the number 13, is the death, right? So the number 13, which is connected to the mother arc and the 13th sign, the number 13 is the death card in the tarot. So that's part of the death, rebirth, alchemy, transformation. The alchemical part of it comes in from the ether where we can go into a death cycle and have it carry us all the way into, tran into transformation. You know, being in the cocoon and all of a sudden being a butterfly instead of the cabal that wants us to actually form a um, prison wall around our cocoon so that we can't emerge. And when it's time to emerge, we're, we're actually still stuck in the cocoon and, and, and we, we've like, forgotten our abilities to you know blossom and thrive in this time because of all the different tactics that they use so the fact that we're in this particular time the galactic core of andromeda and milky way are one with each other and this mother arc energy which represents the 13th gate has created these corrections along with the grid workers and the guardian groups that have come in and the fact that these higher groups are able to incarnate and that this is a cosmic and earthly event called, you know, ascension. It's crazy to see what these times are actually, um, what, what, what we're actually going through. And what it's actually doing is it's because of the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, and they know that this is a period where we let go of the old paradigm, we begin to move into the new paradigm, which is the transformation process that these outer planets represent. The Saturn energy doesn't want to let go. So it keeps streaming stuff through the media, through these dark technologies and through these dark hidden agendas to sabotage our relationship with death. And sabotaging our relationship with death means that we fear death instead of embrace transformation. So anything that relates to death, the death card, the planet Pluto or the eighth house, which has to do with death, rebirth, alchemy and transformation, what we're doing in this time right now, or a lot of people are falling into the trap of is the fear of death, not the understanding of, oh, wait a second. You know, we, we, we are pulling that back. We're, we're, we're pulling our relationship with death back to ourselves so that we can actually rebirth and thrive. And as we see, the 13 families hijacked that number. They took away the 13th floor um, in hotels. They you know, made the day Friday, the 13th, Friday being a Venus day with the number 13, a day to fear. You know, it's this very, very 
uh, taboo sort of thing and to fear death, fear death, fear death, fear the goddess, fear the feminine, right? And, and, and it's required that we all embrace that because that's going to purify the negative ego and it's going to help the masculine be in the divine masculine embodiment because it really recognizes its true role instead of what we've been programmed to become. Because as long as there's imbalance, as long as there's divide and conquer, we're never really going to be able to go through that transformation process because that integration of polarity is lacking. That relationship and conception is lacking. And instead of coming into harmony within ourselves to birth this new reality, this imbalance and this divide and conquer is like going to more of an extreme and in feeling, you know, almost like that missed growth period or that misstep and also the targeting of uh, our throat chakra as we've moved from the Capricorn Cancer nodal axis to the Sagittarius Gemini. So basically the nodes represent the growth period that we're going through as a humanity on a greater soul level. And the whole idea of the nodes, even in our own personal chart, is to move out of the personality matrix where we're easily mind controlled and begin to move into the soul matrix. The soul matrix requires integration of polarity. So we're each born with the nodes in our chart uh, that will have us be born with one, the south node, with a sign in a house. And then we're looking to achieve the opposite. We move into the north node. And as we balance ourselves in that integration of polarity, we cycle back to the south node and we complete the circle. So as a humanity right now, we've really needed to work out a lot of that Saturn moon matrix stuff to be prepared for what these times are all about instead of get locked into the next wave or the next level of their new world order rollout. And that's what a lot of people are falling into. So with the Sagittarian Gemini part of it, it has everything to do with talking, speaking our truth, uh, speaking our truth beyond the mind control, beyond what they're attempting to do. And so anybody who does that runs the risk of being censored. It's like they almost can pick up on that frequency. They obviously have those algorithms and they're going to see those posts, begin to take those posts down. And, and now we're seeing the censoring because the truth is so threatening. If, 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 if it was easy for them to just you know, have these dark technologies and stream th stuff through the news or taint our food or, you know, do all this stuff. If that was enough, they wouldn't, they wouldn't bother censoring. They wouldn't feel threatened by it. So we know that our words carry a lot of power because the frequency of speaking truth can offset dark technologies. It can actually neutralize the harmful effects because it carries a certain hurt. It carries a certain tone. When we're in the mind control, though, we tend to spread mind viruses. We, we spread fear. We shame, blame, and and, and complain and the shame, blame, complain game. And, uh, and we're just kind of like locked into that lower place, but we, that doesn't get censored, that's encouraged, right? And, and, and the civil unrest and the protesting and all this stuff, while you know, they're convincing people that there's some liberal approach to the way they handle matters as we're getting more and more assimilated into the next wave of NWO. It's all these facades. And I don't wanna get into the political, but I mean, it's so hard not to as we get close to election time. But going back to the initiations. So the initiation for us right now, regardless of what our chart is, some people might be being hit a little bit more than others. The transits of the Pluto, Saturn, Jupiter might be crossing over some personal planets. They might already have these energies strong in their chart and they've recognized that they've had a mission from childhood or they got downloads along the way or started to do their research before, you know, you know it's down to the wire where it's like, you better wake up really fast. Um, are gonna be riding these waves a little bit more easily than ones that are going through the growth period in utter confusion. They don't know who to trust or what to believe. And they're really, really being taught to fear, um, you know, death, you know, this virus, even though the numbers, you know, are not fearful. And even though there's so much, you know, that we don't need to, you know, get, get all, you know, concerned about, it's, it's a part of the grooming process for the next level of it all. And also to manipulate the election so that, you know, they take hold and we basically get infiltrated, you know, by, you know, China and, 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 and we all know, uh, many of us know what that means. And a lot are not quite allowing themselves to see it. And there is some sort of link between our neurology, our brainwave patterns and what we see in the television and why, you know, it's so easy for some to just get so locked into it. There's also patented dark technologies that, can control crowds that can create, you know, all sorts of uh, survival energy. It can target relationships. It can target friendships and groups. So if there's like a lot of the heavy metal still in the system and one hasn't really done a lot of detoxing or there's implants or things that haven't been addressed, you might find that like a friend or loved one has absolutely done a 360 degree turn on you, or they've just decided, you know, the friendship or the relationship isn't important enough, you know, because you might support this. And, and it can go both ways because we're in just, 
a really tense time and, and, and it's heading towards a breakthrough, let's hope. But with initiatory planets, Pluto requires us to not fear death because if we're going to step into that transformative energy and embrace the number 13, which one plus three is also the emperor in the tarot, you know, then we've got the willpower. Then we've got that Mars energy. Then we're actually healing our solar plexus. We're clearing out the mind control. We're clearing out how it has created sub-identities and false personas and, and how, you know, a person might slip into that so much that they literally defend the very thing that they think they're fighting. It begins to do a clearing. So the initiation is that we got to face that discomfort, face that dark night of the soul, face those fears and overcome it. You know, part of it might be you have a little life review or you just realize, you know, wait a second, I've died before, you know, we, we've incarnated before. And, you know, if that's really the one thing I got to let go of, you know, is that really a big deal? Because it's really getting in our way of being able to actually live. It's getting in the way of our ability to flow with these greater energies that are so much more powerful that represent a positive organic ascension timeline. So this hijacking and getting trapped in this other stuff is a huge concern, which means that we are going through a death cycle that's causing the loss of our intuition, the loss of self, and more assimilation into things like AI and transhumanism and these dark and deadly agendas, because basically we're not completing the cycle of the death, rebirth, alchemy, transformation, which means something else is going to come in and, and control things even more than it already has. Because if we're not going to complete the cycle, what ends up happening is something else jumps in and says, all right, now we've got you in fear. Now we can build a prison around your cocoon. You won't be able to emerge. And we're not just talking emergences and, oh, I feel transformed. We're talking about upgrading and awakening dormant strands of DNA which hold higher harmonic universes, take us into the soul matrix. And when we're in the soul matrix, the integration of polarity is there. We're able to meet soulmates, soul family, and we're able to really function on a much deeper level where you know, we'll see an increase in synchronicities, magic and flow, and also improvements to our health, even more rapidly than we've seen before, but we have to literally like consciously make that decision. So that's kind of what we're in for. There's a lot of hyped up anger a lot of it is the rage of, you know, righteous rage and the passion and fire that we need. But some of it is like being literally diverted into these movements or into these belief systems, you know, that are very dangerous. So everybody's got to constantly keep themselves in check because everybody is going to think that they have all the, not think that they have all the answers, but it's, it's maybe hard to humble ourselves when we're being, you know, all amped up and every single person needs to do that to just really breathe in and allow the intuition to expand and increase and just make that the priority. Because you know, even if you're mostly 80% aligned with truth and you're in that truth frequency, there are still other elements that we have to be careful of when it comes down to disclosure, how that's gonna look. Um, and you know, we just can't give all our power away. We need to be uh, totally doing the inner work, but supporting you know, those that are you know, riding a similar wavelength and, and being mature enough to be a part of this greater conversation so that we can all have each other's back. So, we've been dealing with Uranus and when we start to move into the Saturn um, conjunct Jupiter, you know, a lot of amplification of the Saturn square Uranus is going to be coming in. And we're, we've been dealing with the Saturn square Mars. Again, squared aspects mean tension and friction. A Saturn square is a lot more about energy blocks, also fear and where we feel stuck or, or limited and held back. So if you want to, you know, go to do something public, uh, that you used to do and you're not allowed to because of this virus. That's an example of where you're wanting to do something and somebody says, no, you can't. So we don't want to struggle too much with that. We want to say, okay, well, if that's the case, let's utilize this time as best as we can to begin to build a foundation for the future, to begin to implement solutions, to begin to align ourselves with, you know, new careers, new jobs, new positions in life, you know, that, that helps you to be more self-made, more connected to your personal calling and mission. Um, and, and, and just begin to kind of detox and let go of the rest of it as best as you possibly can. I do subscriptions uh, with Cosmic Gaia and Dark to Light uh, with David Rodriguez. And basically it's all about helping people in this transition to really, really do what they want to be doing. And it's just of great support. You know, if you guys want to check that out, um, I do, you know, we do events, uh, we do Q and A shows, and it's really about, you know, building community. And, and working out a lot of these, you know, struggles and difficulties and, and making sure that nobody feels alone or isolated and making sure also that it's, it's, it's workable maybe with your budget. But there's a lot of heartbreak going on as we enter this month because of the Venus square Pluto. There might be a lot of relationships ending. There's a lot of amped up, uh, you know, anger and frustration. 
um, especially, you know, when, when there's just so much difficult news to process all the time. But, you know, we also have to make sure that we're looking out for all the, you know, really positive things and put the attention on ourselves because this is really about us. This is our initiation. To, 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 to work with Pluto right now is to literally move through all of this and come out the other end and, and, and have so many of your energy centers clear so that when you do speak, it speaks volumes. It literally activates people. They might not even know what you're talking about, but it's the tone of voice, it's the intention that you hold, and it's the clarity and, 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 and what that does to a person's sound and tone and frequency that's really gonna help. And I know you guys just had David Sarita with his amazing technology. So there's all sorts of really great tools and modalities and advanced level technologies that are in tune with our DNA upgrades and in tune with our authenticity, because ultimately we're the most advanced technology. And when we're authentic, when we're true to ourselves, we offset all this negative stuff, because that's really all it's attempting to do is take over our natural ability to generate the light codes, our natural ability to speak our reality into the world to see it reflect back. And when we build numbers and do events like this, it's only going to increase. But the Saturn square Uranus, you know, is really the, the, the showdown where that we're dealing with the old Saturn or the Uranus energy. Uranus is ruled uh, as the ruler of Aquarius, has to do with uh, more progressive type things. It has to do with, like I said, authenticity, also the higher mind and the unified field, the zero point unified field. If Saturn has enough of a hold on it and we start to experience the shadow of Uranus, the shadow side of Uranus is AI and dark technologies. The shadow side of any planet really represents where we haven't processed that particular planetary energy and we're handing it to something outside of us. So like the dark side of Neptune or when we're working the shadow of Neptune, which is another initiatory planet, um, which has to do with the multidimensional, has to do with the creative imagination and our ability to tap into the creative imagination to manifest our reality. And it's also where we might run into, or we do run into the scrambling of our fire codes and how that is like the crazy astral with all the astral parasites. We have to move through these gatekeepers in order to get to the clarity and to the crystalline waters to be able to bring that in and, and, and start to move all that gunk out so that, that that great energetic flow is there and that's available. But the shadow side of Neptune has to do with addiction, self undoing, and where we go into so much fear because of the mind control that we literally contaminate our creative imagination. And our creative imagination ends up being imprinted with these programs instead of the clear and direct connect that we have with source energy. And so as we recognize that these times are really about getting in touch with these dormant strands, we don't have to look at it through the lens of science, but it's important to understand that it does come down to a science. It does come down to sciences. The nucleic acids of our DNA are elemental. The fifth element, which represents the mitochondrial DNA, is what's been repairing as the sun started to move through a fiacus. It's the 13th sign and it's ruled by the ether. It's created these corrections. So it's, 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 it's actually healing our damaged DNA. It's helping us to move into a greater expression of ourselves. But we have to kind of like face the shadow in order to be empowered so that these planetary energies can begin to uh, unlock things and almost like graduate us out of the wheel of necessity, which is the Zodiac. And it begins to take us into, you know, more conscious and creative control, not from an ego level, but from a co-creative level. And, and we, need to, we need to earn our place to be, you know, in this level of personal power because it's the power of spirit. It's the power of love. It's the power of integrity. It's not the power of force or control or ego domination, which is what the old Saturn program has taught people to be. Um, and, 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 and in an unhealthy ego expression, which has really thrown off the solar plexus, which has made it so hard to balance energies between the masculine and feminine and the electromagnetic. So in this Uranus square Pluto, which represent the electro and magnetic, the electric and magnetic, being at friction with each other has been a lot about how, you know, we can work out those kinks, go through this awakening process and realize, wow, that's all present to us. In actual fact, these challenges are the initiations. These dark night of the soul experiences or these times that we go through pain or confusion or self-doubt are a huge part of the initiation. The initiation isn't just waking up and being like, oh, I got it totally figured out. It's really being present with the self, like moving through some of that stuff and not freaking out. Because what has happened in our society is the medical industry takes advantage of these initiations and likes to medicate people, put them on pharmaceuticals. If you're having a nervous breakdown, if you're going through an identity crisis, if you feel like you're dying as you're going through this transformation cycle, which requires a certain level of the death part, 
um, then, you know, we're just saying, please solve this. I, I can't, I can't do this. It's too painful, you know, and that's our fear of the greater messages coming through. Cause some of that pain is knocking out the mind control and clearing out the energy centers that we can make space available to get the downloads from our higher self and source energy and to get the upgrades. So we got to expect that it's not going to be comfortable. We know that if we go through a physical detox, sometimes it involves really, really like icky sort of experiences and symptoms where you almost feel like you're worse before you're getting better. So we have to begin to embrace these initiations because we're being really, really worked on a cosmic and earthly level to really stay in alignment with these ascension energies. And, and the more we externalize it, the more we you know, you know, fear this process, uh, the more compromised we're going to be because it really does come down to the choice to allow these energies to work you and help you to mature and grow and be the best of yourself or the absolute fear of it where your fear of it is causing you to attract yourself to things that reinforce that fear and anxiety. Um, and also where we can't see uh, lies between lies and truth. We, we, we can't tell who's who, we can't tell what's what. And if we don't tune our frequency up to, to our own authentic vibration, um, it's very difficult to you know, navigate because we, we can't tell um, who's who and it's very easy to just believe in things. So if our energy is, is doing that, what happens to that energy? It gets siphoned and harvested. Our energies have been siphoned and harvested for a very, very long time. And, and it's just like being in a negative relationship where you might be with a narcissist or a control freak who literally is pushing your buttons just to drain you, just to get a rise out of you. Um, and we see it with greater communities, of course, and we're seeing it, you know, in how certain things are planted in social media to make it very difficult to get along. And it's a really tough thing to navigate. But the censorship is like the big deal right now. And finding alternative ways to have these sort of events, if need be, um, to get, you know, information out there. But, okay, so I was talking about the fifth element, how that corresponds to the mitochondrial DNA and the element ether, and the fact that this is all repairing. What we're basically repairing is our relationship with the mother. We've been dealing with 26,000 years of dark reversals and um, inversions and facades that are handed to us to make us think that, oh yeah, you know, we've got our mother Mary, you know, Mary Magdalene, you know, and, and, and yes, that's important, but there's so much more to the story and how these divine feminine and goddess archetypes relate to the maiden mother crone, the stargates, the earth grids, the planetary body, the planetary consciousness, and so much that has taken place in our galactic history that we don't learn in school. So the problem is in this world that we see today is all this indoctrination has kept a real education away from us. And so that's why, you know, people that are just kind of coming around are in this sort of false version of feeling like they're awakened um, because they are masters of psychological operations and they know exactly uh, how to create the conditions to get a huge portion of the population to go along with, um, you know, what they're, what they're saying. And anybody can just look up Project Mockingbird. Anybody can look up patented mind control technologies and see, you know, what it is that they're targeting. Um, not just our unity, but particular movements that are actually beneficial so that people get steered towards the ones that aren't. Um, and the thing is the technology that's dark doesn't have that much of a hold over us uh, if we don't buy into the bait that we see through the television, media, and entertainment industry to a certain degree, of course. Um, and this, all this indoctrination, if we're actually free of that, we already automatically hold an override frequency and we can really help to wake people up. Of course, it's not going to happen overnight for some, but to have that override frequency is everything. And to stand in that flow, that energetic flow where you're grounded to the earth and you've created that root system with the earth and you're branching out to the downloads and the energies of the, the unified cosmic trinity, uh, zero point energy to come in and clear our systems out, you know, each single one of us in doing that becomes a major force of growth and change. Even just going into town or into the grocery store, it's like you end up generating an energetic field around you and with your intention and with your creative imagination intact and not infected by all these other things, you begin to shift the reality around you and those dark technologies don't really have as much of a ability to actually injure people. I mean, we are the organite, we are, you know, these stones and crystals, but it's certainly helpful to have these tools or modalities and aids and medicines, you know, while we begin to remember. So, you know, it, it, it sometimes takes that training wheel or it takes that connection and working with it on a consistent level to be like, oh my gosh, there I am. 
okay, I got to remain there. I got to be consistent because it, there's going to be all sorts of things trying to, you know, poke holes and throw you back down. Because as we begin to activate our galactic chakras beyond the seven chakra system is very often when we get attacked the most. And that has a lot to do, you know, with our DNA. When we start to go into the eighth and ninth, that's the infinity spiral that um, connects to the uh, base of our skull. And uh, we've been implanted there, ethereal implants from, uh, you know, times where, you know, towards the end of the Atlantean um, civilization. And uh, we lost, you know, our galactic memories and everything like that. But when we move through these different levels, right? So hey, we see Laura. the 3D earth. Yeah. Laura. Hey, just want to pop in real quick just to give you a heads up. We're just under five minutes left for time. Oh, um, and I want, I want to make sure that you have time to plug um, all of your stuff to your upcoming uh, event with, with Neil on Portal to Ascension, as well as Dark to Light, as well as CosmicGaia.org. So I just want to give you yes. that heads up that that's kind of where we're at. And just let me Perfect. know when, when you're ready and we'll do the plugs. Okay, great. Yeah. So um, just about, you know, the year ahead when we're, you know, dealing with the Saturn and Aquarian energies, you know, with Jupiter and this conjunction, you know, it's just so important that we recognize that we're the most advanced technology and that all these, you know, solutions that they might be presenting to us that are technologies, we have to be very careful of, you know, and we want to, you know, not put it all on a president. We want to be his allies. We want to be a part of the greater team. We want to, you know, try and, you know, get the information that a lot of us has been sharing out there on a mainstream level and get more support with that. Um, I respect everybody and love everybody, no matter what your choices are or, or wherever you are in your own, you know, sort of growth and life experience. But, uh, you know, I know a lot of us, you know, we're really well researched and, and, and I just hope you give us a chance and that you can put down those TV sets and, and, and be very careful of that, you know, false, uh, media and, um, and just know that some amazing, amazing things are happening, but we have to stand in alignment to experience it so that we can uh, embody and generate the beautiful world that we wish to see.